On today's video, we're going to go over our off-grid deer camp utilities. Water, sewer, electricity, and heat. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors and like I said earlier, we're out at the camp today and it is an off-grid deer camp and I thought we'd talk about our utilities out here, right? The sewer, the heating, the electricity and the water and, and how we do that out here being off-grid. It's not going to be like a lot of your guys' house that you live in, right? Where these magic pipes and magic wires come in and bring you heat and bring you electricity and bring you water and take away your sewage. It's obviously going to be a little bit different when you're off-grid. Of course, off-grid means that you are not electrically connected to the electrical grid that supplies power to everybody. So we will start off with showing you how we have electricity out here at our off-grid deer camp. So this is our power distribution area for the camp. We have our small battery bank. Um, when deer season comes around, we'll bring a few more batteries out, give us a little bit more power. Here we just have a small inverter, and the inverter just kind of clips onto the positive and the negative of the battery bank. We've got these uh, batteries all in parallel, so we have multiple 12 volt batteries. We wire them up in parallel and that actually gives us a bigger 12 volt battery. And this is a 12 volt inverter. Okay, we've got it hooked up to the battery bank. We have it switched on. So we have power at this inverter. This cord right here is actually the cord that feeds the entire camp. Okay, goes up and around a little bit, goes over to this little breaker box, feeds the camp. Okay, so we can plug this in and now we have essentially energized the camp and uh, a feed comes back from the camp that actually goes to this light so now we can turn that light on if we need to. So that's the battery bank, the inverter, and the feed to the camp and that's how we get power into the camp. But what happens when the batteries go low or the batteries die and we need to charge them up, right? And that's where the generator comes into play. Of course, when the batteries are dead, we'll start the generator and we've got an extension cord that we plug into the generator and that goes over to our power distribution area for the camp. So here's the cord that comes from the generator. See how we got it labeled from generator? All right, and then to charge the batteries, we'll just take a normal 12 volt battery charger, plug it into that cable with the generator running, and then hook the leads up to the battery, the battery bank, and charge all the batteries up. And we do also have a small solar panel, and this is the controller for that solar panel. And we'll hook this up to the batteries, you know, every time before we leave, and that'll keep a little charge on them. But, you know, when you come out here in the middle of November and you're running lights and the TV all day long, uh, solar panel is not going to keep up, okay? Especially up here in the UP where we don't get a whole lot of sun come November. And if there's cloud cover, of course, it's even worse. But, uh, yeah, the solar panel is mostly just to kind of keep it trickle charged, you know, in between visits coming out here. So we always have a little bit of power when we first get out here. So we've got the battery bank, inverter. We've got our charger when we need it. We've got our little solar uh, panel controller when we need it. And all this together is our electric utility for our off-grid deer camp. Here's another one of our deer camp utilities. This is the wood stove, okay? Now, I did do an entire separate video on this specific wood stove itself. This is an Ashley wood stove. Um, if you're really interested in getting more details, um, on this wood stove, you can check out that video. I'll leave a link in the description below of this video if you want to check that out. But, you know, kind of in a nutshell, 
this Ashley wood stove. It's kind of a wood stove inside of this shroud, okay? It opens from the side, and then there's this inner part that opens up. So it's like the wood stove is kind of inside of a shroud. But the really cool thing about this wood stove is it has an automatic mechanical damper. All right. Now I think most of you guys know that wood stoves have dampers. Either they're mounted on the wood stove themselves, or there's maybe a damper in the stovepipe itself. And, you know, giving them more air generally creates more combustion, more heat, less air, less combustion, less heat. But you always have to kind of fiddle with it, move it back and forth, kind of dial it in. Well, this wood stove actually has a automatic mechanical thermostat. And, and it's adjustable right here, okay? It's kind of a high and a low. This is kind of peeling back, but there's a high, there's a high and a low. And what there is, is there's kind of a, uh, a spring, almost like a clock spring in there. And of course, when the spring heats up, it kind of flexes and opens up. When it cools down, it kind of shrinks and contracts. And this wood stove utilizes that motion to actually open and close a damper as this wood stove heats and cools. And we've got this nice top where you can set uh, pots and pans on the top here to keep them warm. We've got our thermal electric fan. It uses the heat from the stove to kind of produce a voltage. And then that voltage is used to actually run a small little electric motor, which turns the fan. So as this uh, wood stove heats up, that fan will start spinning and it kind of helps to uh, distribute the heat in and around the can. And that's kind of the unique thing about being off-grid, right? Whether you just have like a off-grid deer camp or an off-grid house, you don't have these magic pipes and wires coming into your house or camp that give you electricity, that give you heat, that give you water. You have to find a different source for those sort of things. So for our deer camp, this is the heating source for the camp. And I'll tell you what, it's very rewarding to be warmed up by a wood stove that you cut the wood for. Okay, um, you're very conscious of all the time and effort that goes in to getting that wood out of the woods, getting it split, getting it stacked up, getting it dried, putting it in the wood stove, lighting it on fire. You're very conscious of all the effort that goes into that to give you warmth. And I think that makes it uh, just that much more rewarding. So this is part of our camp water system. We haul all the water out here, okay? And it's kind of the same as your faucet at home. You just kind of turn it on like that and, and water comes out. But again, when you're hauling all the water that you use out here, you're very conscious of water usage. But the one thing that is different, of course, is if we want to have hot water, we got to heat it up, okay? And that's what we'll do. We'll put some water in one of these tea kettle-like things, light this, uh, you know, tabletop cook stove and heat the water up. Or if it's uh, colder temperatures outside and we are running the wood stove, we can put those tea kettles right on top of the wood stove and then we can have, you know, at our disposal ready to use hot water sitting here all the time. And we do do that a lot of times. Sometimes we'll even put a big pot with water on top and then we do have some good warm water for doing the dishes or a quick little wash up job. Right. And then we uh, bring in all of our drinking water also. And this is our sauna. And this is a big source of our hot water. This is where we come to to wash up, get cleaned up. And just like the wood stove, I did do an entire separate video on just how the sauna works and how the hot water gets heated up. And if you want to check that out, I'll also leave a link below to that video, okay? But in a nutshell, we have a holding tank with water in it here, okay? And we have some uh, like radiator hose and we've got some pipes that go into the stove. All right. And you light a fire in the stove. It heats up the water inside the pipe and it kind of circulates and you get good hot water right here. Okay. We also have a little uh, pot here on top. Keep water in that. That'll warm up too. Here's our uh, holding tank for our water, our cold water. We just put the water in there. Periodically when we come out, we'll, we'll fill that up so we have a lot of good water for when we're staying out here. And this is essentially our shower or our bath. We get all this good hot water going, get out here, we can wash up and get nice and clean at the end of uh, each day's hunt. 
Yeah, when you have to haul in all the water that you drink, that you do dishes with, that you wash up with, you become very aware of the amount of water that you're using. To check out all the Kinetters Practical Outdoors merchandise, click on the link below in the description of this video. And hey guys, if you enjoy the content of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And here is the outhouse, right? And I think most of you guys know how an outhouse works. We've got a toilet seat, you know, it's built over a hole that we dug and that's where you take care of your business, right? Got the toilet paper. We got a spare roll inside our tin there. A couple hunting magazines to check out, you know, kind of multitask while you're uh, spending some time out here. And really, it works out great. You know, do not go with the bargain cheap toilet paper, okay? I know you guys are spending a little extra money during deer season. You're looking uh, for some places to cut corners, right, on your spending a little bit. Don't make it the bathroom tissue, okay? You know, get yourself like some quality toilet paper, all right? I mean, just think about it, guys. The one week a year where you're on a steady diet of beer and curled meat, that is not the week that you should be skimping on toilet paper. Am I right? Okay. Yeah, and this, uh, this kind of helps keep the smell down in the outhouse. We got the uh, ashes from the wood stove. And it works out pretty good just dumping them down the outhouse hole. It's going to smell as fresh as a spring day in there. <coughs> as Peter's Stop the audio. Turn hold that in you finish your line. Definitely got to shovel out the outhouse. You don't want to head out here in a big panic and have to do your shoveling before you go in an emergency. Mushrooms and onions. And pretty much all our cooking is sure. done on either a tabletop cook stove or our gas grill. Uh, what, what exactly we got here? Oh, you got, we got some bone in New York strips. Uh-huh. And, uh... All right, guys, that's how we do our utilities out here at this camp. You know, every deer camp, every camp, every off-grid home, uh, everything's a little bit different, but that's how we do it out here. It works pretty good. Um, as you can see, you know, it's a, it's a pretty comfortable place to stay. We're not really uh, suffering too bad at all uh, when we come out here and we're off-grid, you know. Not too bad at all. But anyways, guys, hey, remember to hunt fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.